Hello, my name is John Kissy. I'm the creator, writer, and artist of a comic called Dr. Rigby, which will be coming out in October from SourcePoint Press, which you can pre-order now at bit.ly slash Dr. Rigby. And you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at underscore John Kissy. And you are watching Two Geeks Talking, and I'm one of the geeks. Welcome. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept of Rapid Fire is simple. 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes for the interview itself, and we get to talk with creative and talented people in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? Our guest today is a brand new uh, comic creator, at least to Two Geeks Talk. We're joined today by the ever talented John Kissy, creator of Dr. Rigby. How are you doing today? All right, Kurt. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Thanks for having me on the show. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Okay. Well, my name is John Kissy. Like, like we established, I'm a graphic designer and comics creator. I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida with my beloved husband and dog. And I am the creator, writer, and artist of a comic called Dr. Rigby, which is a horror action comic that's coming out soon from Source Point Press. It'll be in October, and it is uh, available for pre-order now at the link below, which is bit.ly slash Dr. Rigby. You can find me on Instagram at John underscore Kissy and Twitter at John underscore Kissy. So tell us what exactly the story of Dr. Rigby is, because I, I loved the artwork and I, I love the the color scheme is, is interesting. It's not your standard traditional you know, usually people go black and white when it comes to horror. You're giving it a nice sepia style to it, at least from what I've seen here. But tell us the, the concept of Dr. Rigby and, and why it's an important story to tell. Two things I really love, which are horror, pulp era horror, 1960s kind of spy adventure. So it's kind of a, I like to call it a mashup of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft and James Bond. So mm -hmm. on one hand, you've got that kind of trippy cosmic horror of the pulp era and the the fun kind of spy adventure, that mid-century stylish adventure of the 60s like James Bond. I think it's a fun mashup of those those two things. There's more to it than that. It's, it's kind of a love letter to things that I think are are cool. Horror and action adventure, basically. So then talk about some of your characters, because I, I find namology pretty fascinating. And Rigby, I mean, you talk about Eleanor Rigby and, and the Beatles and that reference there as well, too. I want to see your mindset of, of character creation. Oh, well, it's funny you say Eleanor Rigby. The, the name is based on uh, Eleanor Rigby, actually, which I always thought was a very uh, interesting, haunting song. And I always thought the name Rigby was very cool and proper, kind of a strong, old school, formal kind of name. And actually, there's a little Easter egg where he actually... It's established the character of Dr. Rigby. He did have a wife named Eleanor, which is a uh, tiny Easter egg in the comic, something that will hopefully be touched on in later stories if I'm able to tell them. So what's the most misunderstood aspect about horror and, and especially the pulp genre of horror that maybe people don't understand? Maybe the misunderstanding is horror is disturbing in a way that isn't pleasant. Like to me, horror is almost like a cathartic experience. I was telling a friend earlier, I, I love horror, all types of horror, but real life, true crime, I'm not a big fan of. The, the real thing is very disturbing to me, but I think almost horror is a, a strange creative outlet to deal with perhaps the real horror of life, which is why I kind of prefer the more supernatural, fantastical elements of horror which is in a comic. The fact that this is being published by SourcePoint Press is, is a wonderful uh, thing to see. They, they definitely have their, their fingers in the, the horror genre, it's safe to say, and they've produced many amazing books as well, too. How did the conversation come about between you know, your creation of Dr. Rigby and SourcePoint Press? Well, it was really just a matter of submitting it to them. And I'm a graphic designer by trade. I, I'm kind of revisiting comics as a career and as a creative endeavor. I used to do it when I was younger and I've always loved it. This is sort of a passion project, a, something I wanted to pursue. And I just submitted it 
and they expressed some interest in it. And uh, I was very, very grateful because they're a great publisher and they have some great horror books and just a great company. They're committed to, you know, diversity and all, all forms of creativity. So I was really pleased when they expressed interest in it. You now it's coming out in October. I, it's kind of an unexpected thing for me, but I'm, I'm very thrilled to be promoting it. So what is your creative kryptonite? Probably like most people just anxiety, worry, general kind of angst. I, I think actually it's interesting, the antithesis of that is creativity. So I, I feel like when I get in that zone, if I'm anxious or kind of stuck, just starting some kind of creative action helps kind of dispel that. When you sit down and start to take some creative action, I think that creates more motivation. And once you start to see results, that can really help. Creativity is the kryptonite to its own nemesis. What has been the response to those that you've shown maybe a semi-completed version of this uh, so far based on your story? Uh, mostly it's been positive. I mean, people, it's, it's people that like me and know me. So hopefully they're, uh, they're not too biased, but I think like what, what you said, I, I do like when people say that it seems unique. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going through a, for a retro kind of feel, you know, like you say, it, it, I'm trying to go for a vibe of something that feels more like a, a classic Hitchcock film or maybe a Twilight Zone episode, but with, with that kind of monotone or duotone color where there's, there's black and white, but there's this element of, of color that's introduced that gives it what I feel is like kind of a retro, but also kind of a classy feel to it. So it's, it's horror, but I liked, you know, I want to give it a little classy, sexy twist <laughs> in the artwork. Everyone usually asks, what's the wisest piece of advice or what's the most bullshit piece of advice that you've received in your career? But what is the second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you in not only making comics, but also as a graphic design? Well, something that's kind of stuck with me that's kind of esoteric. It's something that one of my college professors, my art professors said to me, which was, find your voice, <laughs> she said. And at the time I thought, well, that's just kind of a cheesy cliche, like almost like follow your dreams. I was like, no, oh, gee, thanks. But what I come to realize what she meant was that I think any creative person has a unique combination of perceptions and abilities that that makes your work unique, whether even if it's art or, or anything that that is creative. It can be cooking, music, gardening. Each of us has just a unique combination of elements that I think if you nurture that and stay true to it, I, I think your creative work will resonate with people because it comes from an honest place. So yeah, find your unique voice, find your groove. And once, I think once you do it, it really helps the, the process. Well, transitioning from a, a graphical voice to a more literal sense of voice, what was an early experience where you learned that language had power? When I was in uh, high school and early college, I did some acting, some stage acting theater. And we had to have monologues prepared as auditions. And I had this one monologue that I used a few times and it always got a great reaction it's from a play called Tiny Alice. I remember it was a kind of funny and dark, but it also had a, a weird surprising ending. It just resonated every time I did it. I think it helped me get a couple of parts. And I felt like maybe if the way a comedian feels when you kill with a joke, you know, when you really have the audience on your side. And that made me realize that, yeah, you know, the right words and the right combination delivered in the right way can, can really produce a powerful result and a consistent result. So, you know, not so much through art, but a different art form. Now I have to ask, do you remember any of it? Barely. I remember it It ended with kind of a pervy line that I probably shouldn't repeat here. But yeah, I just remember it, it got a laugh at the beginning and sort of a gasp at the end. But I should try to go find it again and see if I can remember it. But I'm surprised I forgot it because I did it so many times back in the day. We can have a whole other episode where I recite the whole thing, <laughs> if you like, Kurt. I will not turn down a avant-garde live performance of a monologue <laughs> of, of such renown that has gotten parts sure. in other plays then. So yeah, it's like a coffee house performance, right? I'll, I'll make sure we get the, uh, the berets with like the snapping of the yes, fingers. Exactly. And, and we'll, exactly. Beat we'll just go beat Nick completely. Sure, sure. <laughs> Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who is that for you? 
It would definitely be my mom who, um, she was always very creative. She was a painter and an artist herself. She was also a writer. She wrote, she wrote short stories for herself. Um, and she, that she shared with our family. Sadly, she passed away in May, but she's always been a source of creative inspiration to me. She's, um, she's always had a kind of a whimsical kind of not, not childish, but childlike view of the world that I've always that I think I got from her. And it, it just made me, I think it's helped with my perception of the world and, and kind of appreciating the strangeness and the humor of the world that that comes mostly from my mom. So it's informed every creative endeavor I've, I've done. So I feel like she's with me with, you know, all of that stuff, art and writing. Next question. From a professional standpoint, you have, well, you have a career in graphic design and illustration. You are creating comics that are now being published on source point press. And I'm sure you'll have many, amazing comics in the future that I can't wait to have you back on to talk about from a professional standpoint, then you are a successful, but do you consider yourself personally successful? Yes, I do. I, I have a wonderful relationship. I've been with my husband for many years. We have a wonderful dog. We have a wonderful group of friends and family. I have my anxieties and worries like anybody, but I think Personal success, I think, is really based on gratitude. You know, I just try to be grateful for the relationships that I have. And just being able to create is, is a real privilege. And, you know, really just on a cosmic level, being alive, you know, just to be alive and observe the world and the universe, it's a privilege. I feel very, mostly fortunate. I think the key to, to all that is, is gratitude for what you have. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Well, the first thing I do is blame others and then <laughs> I have a violent sobbing meltdown and that's no, uh, no, uh, just kidding. I think you have to allow yourself to be a little bummed out when, when things don't go your way. But I do think it's important to treat failure as an opportunity to learn. Like I actually, I saw this really interesting infographic online where it showed a, uh, a figure, a person, two paths and one, one had succeed and the other had learn with the word fail crossed out. You either succeed or you learn. There really isn't failure. And I know that's easier <laughs> said than done. It's hard to maybe have that in mind when things aren't going well for you, but I think it's a useful way to think. It's helpful to view what we perceive as failure as um, just an opportunity to adapt and to learn and, and grow. The younger generation is looking at your work and then becoming inspired to be creative in their own way, whether it's as a illustrator or a comic creator or designer or whatever they would like to be creatively, hopefully you are inspiring them down that path. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? A big thing is be generous with your time and your experience. You know, there's a lot of great talent out there. You know, I'm really impressed with the way people share their knowledge, the negativity and, you know, haters on the internet get a lot of attention, but I really feel like the generosity people give with their knowledge and experience far outweighs it. You know, you can go on YouTube and learn anything. My little exposure to the indie comics community online has been great, very supportive. So I think it's uh, it's important to keep in mind, you know, that try to give back, be, be generous with your experience. And, you know, I have to say, speaking of generations, you know, I, I've been inspired by people that are a lot younger than me. So I think regardless of your, your age or your station in life, I think it's just important to, you know, to nurture other people's creativity. And it, it, it only helps us all, I think, us creative types. Whether we're introverted or extroverted, it's, it's how we communicate, whether it's through our art or, or words or, or however we, we find our communities, basically. Yeah, well, and like your show, you've been, you know, you've been doing it a long time. You've created a great space for people to come and talk about what they love and what they're creating. I think it's a, it's a great thing. It's inspiring all around. If your life was a comic book, what would its title be? And because I like music, what would its soundtrack be? Oh, the title would be Dr. Rigby available <laughs> from source point press. No, geez, that's an interesting one. The, the soundtrack would probably be either surf guitar rock from the sixties or, um, 
funky jazzy keyboard from the 70s and the title untitled for now oh. for an ironic title <laughs> i could always make it a symbol you know like prince or whatever Ooh, there you go <laughs> that works out well well john i do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking i want to thank you so much for coming on the show thank you kurt thanks for having me i appreciate it before i let you go where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where can we find Dr. Rigby uh, at Source Point Press? Well, Dr. Rigby is available for pre-order currently through previews. You can see this the link at uh, bit.ly slash Dr. Rigby. Uh, you can either order through previews through that link or from a comic shop. And you can find me on Twitter at John underscore Kissy and on Instagram john underscore kissy check it out you'll be you'll be scared and have a good time well like i said i do i do love it i can't wait to see more of it i i want to see more volumes of this as well too so the overarching series of dr Riz rigby and his uh zany adventures into the world of horror and mystery great great me too i want to see more too so hopefully you'll be uh you'll come back on and talk about it more awesome well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talk. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. And we do have a Patreon if you want to support this channel and keep the lights literally and figuratively on uh, in the future, uh, which is patreon.com forward slash TGT Media. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking. Thanks, Kurt. Anytime.